Hey, what's up everyone? If you follow the stock world and Workhorse, you probably know already things are going a little rough for them right now. But I have some news for you folks. Eight months ago, Pritchard EV may have blatantly publicized a connection between Workhorse Group, Walmart, Sunbelt Rentals, and themselves naturally, and I don't think any person including myself caught it. StockTwits user Jim V put me onto it. The post reads, Our trip to Charlotte was an amazing opportunity to educate, demonstrate, and give back to local communities. Thank you to Walmart, Sunbelt Rentals, Workhorse Group, and Riverside Elementary School for a week we'll never forget. Unfortunately, this week that they'll never forget was one we never paid attention to despite this very super scripted toss with a Walmart logo intentionally in the background. Now, you're probably going to ask me, is there a chance that Walmart is only in the image due to their grocery donation? Sure, but my video wouldn't be very long and it definitely wouldn't continue down this route. So instead, let's just explore the new evidence that suggests more is going on behind the scenes. Flying Banana is a fellow YouTuber who sort of creeps on the workhorse facility via drone, and he caught this interesting tidbit of, well, it's two Sunbelt rental trucks at the workhorse facility. Now, this definitely doesn't prove that anything is happening with Walmart, but this next photo from stock Twitch user Workhorse Believer certainly makes things more intriguing. Not only is that a very similar tint of blue to Walmart, but that C-1000 is very clearly equipped with a drone launcher on the top. Some people are even speculating that the Walmart Plus Spark logo fits suspiciously well on the hood, but it could literally be anything under there we don't know. What is worth noting is that Walmart has never been secret about their desire to utilize drones into their operations. You don't need me to Google that for you. So instead, I'm going to talk to you about more drone speculation. Let's talk about the RFI, that's a request for information, that the USPS posted in 2019. No, I'm not going to talk to you about the Oshkosh contract. I said in episode one and two of this series, I was not bullish on the potential judgment, and I was right there. This request, though, regards the Postal Service missions involving long driveway delivery where a drone would launch from a vehicle, make a delivery, and return to the vehicle while the carrier continues the route. That's particularly interesting because that's literally a patented process of workhorse that expires in 2036, so good luck doing that without them. Additional missions include remote or difficult delivery points, including uh, rugged terrain or a small island. They want to do a ride-sharing model where customers could use an application to access the USPS drone fleet for business-to-customer delivery that sounds kind of like the horsefly in Aries, but I won't get into that today. And finally, they even requested infrastructure as a service which is when they're going to use drone service providers to leverage the USPS's office and vehicle coverage, launching, charging, and data networks. Now, once again, if they mean vehicle launching, that's already part of the workhorse patent, so they're going to have to go through them, I believe. They could use a standalone launcher, but I don't think it could be part of a vehicle, and I don't think your postman is getting outside of his vehicle and assembling a drone launcher. Now, it is worth noting, in my opinion, that the USPS goes on to say that they will also use drones for data collection operations, including mapping for use in future autonomous vehicle initiatives and USPS facility and land management objectives. There's a reason that's in green. Why does this matter? Well, while folks were freaking out about the USPS EV contract, I was busy reading about their new contract with the United States Department of Agriculture's Natural Resource Conservation Services, and gee golly, is it juicy. Bear with me, it's a little long, but it states, quote, is part of the pilot program. Workhorse will offer SUAS services, including monitoring via drone, data procurement, and analytics. 
Automating the daily audits with the SUAS will allow the NRCS, that's the National Resource Conservation Service, to expedite information delivery, increase safety for auditors on the ground, be more cost effective, increase fidelity of the data gathered, and ultimately create a more efficient procedure. The first phase of the program involves the company collaborating with NRCS agents to gain a field level understanding of the program's deliverabilities before implementing its SUAS technology to gather actionable data and insights. So that was a mouthful, but from what I retained, that sounds a lot like the data collection part of the USPS RFI for land management. But if you take it a step further and we listen to Rick Doak, the workhorse CEO, when he discussed pulling out of the USPS lawsuit, he said in a statement, quote, We believe the best way for us to work with any governmental agency is through cooperation, not through litigation. By withdrawing our protest, we can also better focus our time and resources on initiatives that we expect will be more productive for our company. So it's worth noting, in my opinion here, that the USDA deal was announced about a month before the lawsuit withdrawal. Perhaps I'm just a crazy person connecting non-existent dots, but further evidence of developments of this drone program become clear when we see StockTwits user Workhorse Believer again posting this image of a new Workhorse Aerospace Division building sign in Mason, Ohio, with the address being 4028 Binion Way. I believe Google Maps pulls it up as Lebanon, Ohio, though. But now, let's transition to the best part, my take in my position. For full disclosure, my position is I'm holding, and here's why. A lot of the negativity regarding the stock revolves around Fuzzy Panda's short report. I don't want to give them unnecessary attention, but there's a number of contradicting details. For instance, they say in their report, quote, the C-1000s, those are workhorse vehicles if you don't know, are poorly engineered and can't drive on the highway. But during the Run on Less Electric event run by the North American Council for Freight Efficiency, the results indicate that the vehicle for Serval Electric, which was a C-1000 van, logged almost 300 miles at 50 plus miles per hour. So unless they're out there doing 95 and a 35, that certainly looks like highway mileage to me. Additionally, the short report states that Workhorse was considered a, quote, unreliable EV manufacturer when the actual quote was referring to the partnerships of Workhorse. Even Fuzzy Panda's own screenshot says it, quote, due to unreliable EV manufacturer's support, meaning they literally didn't even quote the full word, so that way they could create a new narrative. This is the type of manipulation Jim Cramer has previously spelled out in his infamous hedge fund playbook video all over the internet. And for what it's worth, since the report that Fuzzy Panda is referring to came out, Workhorse is partnered with EAVX, a subsidiary of JB Poindexter, aka the dude to own Morgan Olson, AKA the dudes that did the last generation of the USPS vehicle. Additionally, they partnered with Column Solutions for cattle batteries since Enerdel, well, was unreliable. And finally, they partnered with the Merit Fleet Solutions for comprehensive maintenance and repair services, and that's where I would imagine all the recalls are being done anyhow. And that's not even to mention they've revamped their entire C-suite with new executives with connections all across the automotive industry, all the way up to their CEO, Rick Dowk, whose own father is the Automotive Hall of Fame. But guys, just as one final reminder, this is not an endorsement to follow my trade. I am an individual investor. I am not a financial advisor. This should not be considered financial advice. All opinions expressed are my own and are definitely subject to change during mood swings. My name is Dave, and thanks for watching The Market Board.